Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good afternoon, Cloud Native community, and welcome back to Paris, France. My name is Savannah Peterson, and I am so delighted to be here for three days of broadcasting live on the Cube from CNCF's biggest event in Europe. It's also the largest open source event in Europe. It's just a blast. Joined by Rob Strecce. Rob, you've been killing it today. This is a lot of interviews. This has been awesome. I, I think just the, the energy and how we're looking at how everybody is bringing Cloud Native together with their heritage apps is really been a great theme today, and I think that that is where people are really trying to understand all of these complexities. Yeah, it's all about decreasing complexity. Decreasing Everybody wants complexity. that easy button for Absolutely. AI, for everything. Yeah. Really excited to have a, a new guest with us, Dimitri, welcome to the show. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. How's it going for you so far? It's really awesome. So actually this is the very first day when I'm like here on the KubeCon. Yeah. I've had a lot of Meetings yesterday, so today I jumped into the car and drove here two hours from Luxembourg. Oh my goodness! Okay, is that is that where Emma is based? Yeah, Emma is headquartered in Luxembourg. Wow, that's a unique HQ location. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. We love Luxembourg. It's like relatively small, but it's super convenient for us, and they do a lot yeah. to attract the talents into this the country. Yeah, and you said you've got about 80 team members now. Yeah, we are we are around 80 team members. Uh, 15 full-time employees based out of Luxembourg, and another 65 are distributed across the globe. Oh wow, okay, that's exciting. So just in case the audience isn't familiar, tell us a little bit about Emma. So Emma is a acronym. Emma means Enterprise Multi-Cloud Management Application. So what we do, we help bigger organizations to streamline the way they interact with the different cloud service providers and the way they manage the different cloud environments and the applications. So we help them to deploy, manage, analyze the workloads, and, and properly reduce their like cloud costs and what they do in the clouds as well. Wow, and I can imagine that's a huge challenge for folks right now. Yeah, it is. As, especially for the bigger ones, again. Yeah. Because imagine you're like based uh, out of AWS, right? So you have your environment at AWS, and then you decided to acquire someone smaller because of the business, you like the business, not the infrastructure, not the cloud service provider. So you acquired the guys, and you've got this multi-cloud. Like, so you have AWS, imagine they have Azure, and you need somehow to like, merge that, and yeah. you don't have a clue what to do, and you need to hire the high-skilled professionals, and we know there's a lack of high-skilled professionals out of the marketplace, so that's the problem. Yeah, the skill sets, I, I think with multi-cloud, and we're big believers in it here at theCUBE, we talk about it all the time, that not everything is moving to cloud. In fact, we have a lot of uh, research that we've done that shows that it's actually hitting an equilibrium, that 50% of new apps are going to the cloud and 50% of the new apps are actually going on-premise or to a co-location. Do you see that multi-cloud, like a multi-cloud strategy has unique benefits to organizations? I wouldn't say like someone really wants to go multi-cloud, right? And even when they tell you we have a multi-cloud strategy, that's not true. Because in the bottom of their heart, they don't want to be there because it's a very complicated story. So what, what they want to do, they want to stay cloud agnostic. And that's the different thing. Mm. They want to decide where and how they deploy the workloads and how their workloads scale based on the cheapest available instances out of the marketplace or better reliability or whatever. So that's a bit different thing. But on the other hand, again, we see that the guys, they want to leverage this approach where they decide where and how they deploy the workloads and scale these workloads. So we can call it multi-cloud, but we prefer to, to say it's more cloud agnostic than multi-cloud. I think that's a really important differentiation because nobody actively wants to increase complexity. True. I mean, that would, be, that would be proper insanity. How does Emma, speaking of complexity, how does Emma make it easier? How do you, how do you solve this problem? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. Uh, in the background, I'm a networking engineer like you. Yeah. So I started my career 
as an engineering guy, so I know all these things related to the Ethernet, TCP IP protocols, whatever. So and when we started to build MR, we, we never knew like what is the right way to build the best cloud management platform in the world. Yeah. So we decided to just simply get connected all these different cloud service providers, one with another through the multi-cloud networking backbone. So we've built this networking backbone, and on top of that we've built a software, and this is a unified dashboard where you can deploy your workloads, scale them, and on top of that we also have our API gateway where you can get connected all of these applications you have around here, and for example, automate your deployments and the workloads, or for example, export the data to analyze it later on using the different software that you like. So again, unified platform that helps companies to deploy into the variety of clouds. It's kind of like a mission control setup. Yeah, true. Yeah, oh I love that. How, so what sort of, I'm sure that your customers want a lot of things. I bet they want better performance, I bet they want it cheaper, I bet they want to be more efficient. What sort of features do you have that address those different needs, desires? So what we realized that companies, they always have the, the quite similar use cases in terms of infrastructure. So they operate VMs, they operate networking backbones, they also leverage microservices. Sometimes it's like, what was that, 15%, 10% of our customers, they actively leverage in the, 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 the microservices. So let's say mostly it's all about the instances, applications, and the managed services they can get out of the cloud service providers. So imagine Emma is a single platform where you can easily get all of these like services, applications, managed services, and on top of that we are building our own solutions. Like we recently launched the very first multi-cloud Kubernetes as a managed service. So you can imagine wow. you can deploy and scale your workloads across the clouds using this managed service that we launched. I was going to ask you about that because I had heard about it and I, I think, how does that really help people? Because I think even though I mean, we sit here and I think even on the main stage this morning, they talked about how uh, you know, we're 10 years into Kubernetes and, it, and we still have a I long way to go. Okay. And so how do you make it easy for customers to get into Kubernetes through that service? So let's, put aside all the automation thing, so like infrastructure as code and all this like difficult stuff. Let's have a look at the dashboard, right? So we simplified the way the customer deploys his very first cluster. So in a number of clicks you decide, okay, so I want workers in Amsterdam, Google, Asia, Paris, and London AWS to like to distribute the workloads, to be assured that nothing would affect your, your application. So you do this within a few clicks, and then also you set up the policy for the auto scaling in case your application needs to scale. And on top of that, you have already the preset of all operators inside this cluster which are ready to actually onboard your application. And you get it by default, so you don't need to be a high skilled professional. And we provide it as a fully managed service where the control plane is also distributed between the clouds. And all these features, they leverage our networking backbone and help customers to scale their applications and grow their applications faster. And you can manage within the single platform all your existing clusters across the different clouds and the providers or whatever. So you're, you're also helping them from an egress or sure. you know, lateral movement between the clouds and things of that nature. And I would assume that because you know, being in Europe, you know, data provenance and data residency is a big thing, being a, you know, a company from Luxembourg, being in the EU has its advantages as well. Yeah, of course, I mean, Luxembourg itself is, is a very interesting place. So imagine in Luxembourg we have several tier four data centers, so like military grade protection. And from this perspective, it's very unique uh, location. And also, we are quite close to Paris, to Frankfurt, so to the major internet exchanges. And with our networking backbone, we have a physical presence at all of these locations, and we help customers at, at all of the data centers where the cloud service providers are based. And we help our customers to move the data freely and reduce the egress costs. What we do, we, we deploy our own equipment, 
and make this equipment interconnected. So that's the physical networking backbone, yeah. How many different clouds are you working with these days, or do you see your customers working with? Uh, so definitely we support the hyperscalers, yeah. and also we, we think it is important, and we support also the local providers. And that's, that's an interesting thing. If you exclude the hyperscalers, and you connect all the local cloud service providers one with another, the cloud capacity that you can offer to the end users will be significantly bigger comparing to what AWS, Azure, and Google provide uh, to the customers. So again, we support all the hyperscalers, lo local providers, and we do also have the native connectors to the private environments like on-premises infrastructure of our customers as well. So when you come to a show like this, are you, I mean, I bet you're doing a lot of things, but are you more looking for projects to integrate into your toolkit? Are you meeting with bigger teams to figure out how to solve their problems? How are you spending your time in here? Oh. Collecting yeah. the stickers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we, we all love the stickers. Well, and we do, we do our swag yes. segment. Our swag segment will, yes. be on, will be on tomorrow. We're here for the stickers, too. Yeah, jo <laughs> jo jokes aside, so uh, definitely we are here to, to understand uh, what are the let's say, forward-looking technologies and the best of great products exist in, in, a, in a marketplace, right? And we also are willing to partner with the a, with a cloud-native companies because we are strong believers in a bigger future of, of the, the, the cloud-native community. So we are the part of CNCF as well. We work with the, with the companies, we, we support all the contributors, and here we also uh, dis are discussing the partnerships with uh, companies like Datadog and New Relic, because we also see that there are a few overlaps, and we can be like complementary one to another, so yeah. Do, do you see since uh, a new set of customers coming your way since all of the fun with VMware being bought by Broadcom happening? That's, that's a good topic, and actually, when Broadcom bought VMware, uh, a lot of enterprise, let's say, not customers, but prospects, they, they reached out to us like, okay guys, we see that everything is like changing, we, we want to, to hash our risks, so is there anything that, that Emma can, can, can provide us yeah. to, to like, to support us in terms of finding the, 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 the better solution, how to, to mitigate those risks. Right. So, and yeah, thanks to this acquisition, I mean, we, we understand uh, that maybe it's not the best option for the partners and the customers, but thanks to this acquisition, Emma gained a lot of new customers, and we helped them to stay more agnostic than they were before, right? Yeah, I mean, if it, if it fuels business, what are, you, what are you going to do? Interesting tailwinds come from unique locations sometimes, just, just and, and, and I can imagine that's a big deal. What are you What are you looking for in the future? What's next for you guys as a team? So, we are expanding into the United States. Uh, we are in the middle of, of a fundraise that will support this expansion. Uh, so we are expanding into the United States because we see that the cloud market in the United States is 15 times bigger than here in Europe, and the sales cycle is shorter. So it makes a lot of sense business-wise for us to expand. But product-wise, so we are about to build the multi-cloud GPU support mm. because we see all this AI hype. Of course. And we see that the cloud service providers, they cannot offer a lot of like virtual GPUs to the customers, to the end users, because there's only one player who produces this, this GPUs, right? So we want to build as the next big thing, as as an application, that tool that will be able to build a logical GPU on top of the existing accelerator, so you can combine the GPUs from Azure, AWS, and Google, and make like your logical container where you can deploy your application and train your model. How, how do you help organizations with that type of deployment, where they're they're having a piece of an application where a piece of an application one place and a piece of an application another place. Is that really like the superpower for Emma is being able to bring that all together and can it really help them manage through that? So the, de the devil is always in details, right? Uh, and of course, it's if you have a legacy Oracle, pardon me, Oracle database somewhere in Azure and the other one at AWS, and you want them anyhow to be like connect, we can do this, but you need also to put the load balancer in between and do all this stuff. But 
imagine that if there is a, like a Kubernetes, we have a global load balancer and we do have our networking backbone that supports this. That, that makes sense. And where, where do you see Emma next year? Do you see yourself in the United States and really growing in that direction? Myself as a person or, my, or myself yeah. well, as a the company. company? The company. <laughs> yeah, so, so definitely we, 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 we have already hired a few guys um, to cover the United States market. We, we have a few good demos scheduled with the bigger organizations, like super huge companies, and definitely this year they for our company is going to be the, the year of the United States. Yeah, so we see us there. I love that. All right, so final question for you. Okay. When we have you back on the show, because you've been fabulous, what do you hope you can say at next KubeCon that you maybe can't say yet today, outside of penetrating into the US? So I hope the next KubeCon for our company will be both. I mean, we want to attend the European one and the United States one. And definitely during the, these Cube, Cube cons, we want to say that we have succeed with the expansion and we have succeed with the product delivery. Love that. Well, then I guess we'll see you in Salt Lake City. Dimitri, thank you so much for being on the show. And Rob, fantastic questions this segment in particular. And thank all of you for tuning in from home, from your car, or from outer space. My name's Savannah Peterson, here with theCUBE for three days of broadcasting in beautiful Paris, France. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.